good afternoon everyone today uh, we are going to discuss about the routing issues in uh, opportunistic network uh, we shall be starting with uh, uh, fundamentally uh, that how the nodes are communicating in the network followed by uh, when we when we discuss for let's say the mobile uh, uh, ad hoc network uh, uh, how uh, you know it works and then uh, precisely we will uh, move towards uh, what is opportunistic network why opportunistic network and what are the routing issues uh, within the opportunistic network so let's have a look on uh, the the slide uh, which shows a traditional wire network and as we can see that in the traditional wire network what we have is end to end connection and uh, this end to end connection says that if the packet is being uh, you know sent from let's say the source uh, it takes up the route as is being marked uh, you know uh, with the dark arrow uh, and it reaches to the destination but in the traditional network uh, there is a clear cut separation between the end system and the routers correct and the second uh, who is responsible for searching the path is the routers so router has got the uh, responsibility that whenever the packet is being traversed right is going to tell that which is the next hope uh, that packet should take such that to reach that packet from source to destination so this is a traditional network approach now let's look at uh, the mobile ad hoc network right so in the mobile ad hoc network now we cannot make any separation between the end system and the router right so your end system and routers are no more separate every node will have to search for the path and that path should be such that will lead uh, you know packet from a source to destination so what do we say that there are no separations between uh, end system and the routers first second the nodes are uh, responsible for searching the path correct now let's look at the scenario that as we talk for the mobile ad hoc network right a node may move and when we say that the node is moving for a while now there are no more connection right so uh, we have to reconstruct the path and uh, is the routing layer which is responsible for repairing the path right and moment that path gets repaired you can find out uh, you know a stable path for sending the packet from source to destination now let us see this scenario and uh, understand certain observations uh, in the mobile ad hoc network or let's say the man net we say uh, the network is connected and there exists end to end connectivity between source and destination uh, the path exists for the long uh, for the uh, for the you know enough time uh, which allows a meaningful communication right and you now if there is a disruption in the path there can be certainly be repaired in the short order of time right let's look at the scenario and uh, this scenario says what if there is a disaster uh, what if you want to measure uh, let's say the health of the zebra or what if there are flood kind of a situation or uh, what if you want to use it for the satellite missions or maybe uh, for that so uh, this leads to the kind of a network which we want to term as you know the the rise of a sparse disconnected network so now let us understand what do you mean by a sparse disconnected network or let's say sparse wireless network so here why there is a disconnection so disconnection may be necessity or it may be due to design right uh, maybe we want to save the power next uh, we have to look at the node whether all the nodes are mobile some nodes are mobile or none of the nodes are mobile so with the enough mobility if we can offer to the nodes will ensure that uh, over the period of time even though there exists no path uh, the packet may reach from one node to another node so what are the applications where can we utilize the uh, this application is nicely suitable for message passing system right and delay is acceptable we can tolerate the delay why there is a delay because what if there is no path between two nodes for maybe uh, for for uh, for a short duration of a time uh, for maybe for a week time for a day time for a month time or for a year time so delay is acceptable but anyhow we want to ensure that that packet reaches from source to destination right so uh, we say yes a delay uh, is acceptable and and it can work on the multiple time scales 
and that network we term as a delay tolerant network. Now, if this is the delay tolerant network, delay is acceptable, we want somehow that the packet should reach from source to destination. So, whenever we talk for, you know, transferring the message from source to destination in uh, DTN, first of all, we have to understand uh, certain challenges. A very first challenge what we have, there are no end-to-end -end path. And since there are no end-to-end -end path, both proactive and the reactive schemes will fail, right? So, ad hoc network routing protocol can not be utilized in this environment. Second, capacity is time dependent. So, at a time, if the channel is good, if the connections are available, yes, we will able to transfer the message or transmit the packet from source to destination and at a time, we may have to buffer the message sufficiently for the longer time uh, uh, till the, the opportunity arises. And when the connection comes, it's not so that the single connection will come, but there can be a multiple connections, right? And now then we have to select which one out of the available is suitable for relaying the message from source to destination. So, now we stated first that the conventional routing protocol will fail. So, what are those conventional routing protocol for us? So, the conventional routing protocol we take up into the two categories. The one protocol is a reactive protocol which are, uh, which are on demand protocol and the other category is the proactive protocol which are nothing but the table driven protocol. Both of this category of the protocol always assumes before you transmit the message from source to destination that there is an end to end path which exists and then it selects the most optimal route from the available path for transmitting the message. Right? So, the route request cannot reach to the destination. Why route request cannot reach to the destination? Since there is no connectivity. There is no end-to-end -end connectivity. Second, the path break uh, right after or even let's say while being, uh, you know, you are transferring, there can be a path breaks. So, uh, it will not able to detect, let's say, what is the next node that is available for the transmission. Where in the case of a proactive protocol, uh, it happens, uh, it will in fact fail to converge. Why? Because it is a table driven. So, all the information what we store in the table for finding out the next hope uh, will not able to give us any detail if there are frequent disconnections, right? And uh, this eventually means that do we have uh, any other way uh, with which we can uh, at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, do the transmission of a message from source to destination? And answer is yes. Uh, the traditional router, basically it uses the approach that is known as store and forward. The traditional router uses an approach store and forward. Can we now make, you know, store, carry and forward, right? And that's the mechanism which is used by the delay tolerant network or let's say an opportunistic network. So here what it does, so say uh, you want to send a message from uh, node A to D though this pink line shows that there exists a connection, this connection may be momentary connection, but we can assume that there are frequent disconnection. So, node A has got a custody of the message and it stores into the buffer, right? That's a persistent storage. And how long that message is going to be in the custody of node A, unless node A finds that there is some node in the vicinity to whom uh, node A can forward the message. So, now uh, as node A comes into the contact with node B, it forwards or relays the message to node B, right? And uh, node B, as it comes into the contact with node C, it forwards and uh, with this mechanism of store, carry and forward, eventually the message reaches from source to destination. Are we okay? So, uh, broadly, uh, now we have come towards a two typical kind of a characteristics, a traditional network where there exists end-to-end -end connectivity, right? And this is a delay tolerant network where we cannot assume end-to-end -end connectivity. A traditional network where we can utilize a TCP IP suit of a protocol for the transmission and the reception of, let's say, the packet, where in this case, ad hoc network uh, protocol also fails. Why? Because the assumption uh, we keep for the connectivity does not satisfy, right? So, uh, in the traditional network, we use the approach that is store and forward, where in the case of uh, 
uh, DTN or let's say an opportunistic network, we uh, say it is store, carry and forward. So we'll give a custody of a packet, right, to any, any intermediate node if we find that there exists no path till the next relay or a destination. Moment that opportunity comes, immediately the relay node forwards the packet towards the destination. So now let us understand. So that's a challenge. That's a challenge. Uh, till now, uh, whenever we do the research, we have a TCP IP, either we offer some improvement on the TCP IP or we work on an ad hoc network protocols and we try to you know, work around the ad, uh, ad, hoc, uh, ad hoc network protocols. Whenever we talk for a routing, uh, be very clear that uh, you know, why, why we want to improve the performance of the routing protocol? What are the objectives? So very first objective is we want to maximize the probability for the delivery. Right? So that's a first, first and foremost. Uh, you consider any network that is available to us. Second, uh, we want to prevent the buffer overflow. Why? Because moment the buffer overflows, right, uh, it will start dropping the packet. And if the packets are getting dropped, it means uh, the performance of the network will get down because we have to retransmit those packets. Speed up the release of the resource. Since the resources are shared, can we quickly speed up the release of the resources? And can we minimize end-to-end -end delay, right? That's the way. Uh, uh, these are the minimum routing ob uh, uh, objectives what we have. And to minimize end-to-end -end delay, generally what we do, we use the knowledge of the future topology. So it is, uh, in the sense, it is an optimal way we look at the network that we know what is going to happen, right? So we try to compute the path such that uh, it allows us to select the best path from the available, which will ensure the delivery from source to destination in the minimum amount of time. And uh, uh, per hope routing is now preferred over the source routing. So what do you mean by source routing? How do we define the source routing? And what is per hope routing? Per hope routing is uh, you uh, the packet travels from one node to another node. Now that node will decide to which next node the packet should be relayed or for forwarded. That means it's a per hope routing. Where in the case of a source routing, the source node says a path to be followed, right? So the network which we are trying to talk is a delay tolerant network, and that's why because we don't know, we are not, we don't have any surety whether the path will exist or not, and that's why we say per hope routing is preferred over the. Uh, uh, source routing because it you know it offers a flexibility to change the next hope which is really not available when we talk for the source routing right uh, yes the next is uh, an important characteristic that the message splitting is allowed we can split the message right and uh, what we can do we can send the fragments of the message and at the receivers and all the fragments uh, again gets together and then we can able to reconstruct the message but for now and for our discussion we assume that we are not fragmenting the message the message itself is an atomic entity and whenever we send a message the message as a whole uh, gets uh, uh, forward it from source to destination. So now let us look at certain uh, you know uh, strategies. Like uh, uh, in general in the DTN, broadly, uh, if you want to do the classification, uh, there is there are uh, routing uh, protocols which falls under the category single copy, and the other fall under the category multi copy. Right. So what do you mean by a single copy routing scheme? Uh, single copy routing scheme means there exists only single copy of the message within the network. So look at this uh, uh, this diagram. So there is a message for, uh, uh, with the source, right? And it shows right now there are no more connectivity. But assume at a point of a time there is a connectivity and uh, the source relays a single copy of a message M uh, over here. And then whenever uh, it gets a connectivity over the time, uh, the message will be relayed uh, towards the destination. And the D is an ultimate destination to receive the message. So how many message copies are there in the network? It's only one. It's only one, right? What is our objective? We want to improve or maximize the delivery probability. What we want to do? We want to minimize the delay. Now, let us look at this, right? How many transmission we can have? It's a minimum number of transmission. It cannot be one. It can just not be one, right? We say the transmissions are minimum. Why? Because you will start from the source and you keep on forwarding the packet till you get 
to go towards the destination, right? So uh, the, the number of transmission can be there, but the, there are few number of the transmission in case of a single copy, right? Uh, one example of the single copy is a direct transmission protocol. Direct transmission protocol says that the source will only relay the message to the destination. The source will only relay the message to the destination, no other intermediate nodes. Right? So how many transmission we will have in that case? How many transmission we will have if the source says it can only give a message to the destination to no other relay nodes? So how many transmission will be there? Only one. Right? And that's the minimum possible. You cannot have minimum than one as we straight away go to the destination and deliver the packet. But then what can we say about the delay in that case? What can we say, uh, uh, what, what can we say about the delay? What comment we can make for the delay? Why there is no delay? Why there is no delay? There can be a delay and the delay may be maximum. Why? Because uh, delay tolerant network does not ensure that there exists end-to-end -end connectivity. So the source can not come into the contact, maybe directly with the destination. The source may be in contact with some of the relay node, but the relay node should not get this packet. So delay is maximum, but the transmission is one. Delay can be maximum, delay can be maximum, but transmission is only one or say single, right? So that is all about, let's say, a single copy scheme. I hope it is clear, yes? Fine, now let us look at the multi-copy scheme. So the objective once again says, we want to improve the delivery probability. How can we improve the delivery probability? Can we flood the multiple copy of the message within the network? Can we flood the multiple copy of the message within the network? And these days it is, it is like we are flooding the same message to the multiple nodes. As more number of the copies are getting flooded within the network, more are the chances that the message will reach towards the destination. So the number of transmissions can be how many? How many number of transmission if there are n nodes in the network? If the number of nodes are n, the number of transmission will be n minus one. If the number of nodes are n, then the number of transmission will be n minus one and that is the maximum number of transmission, right? How many message copies will be there? Again, n minus one. Again, n minus one. Why? We assume that every node gets a copy, then we have to flood the entire network till we find. It's a maximum number which I'm trying to convey, right? So maximum number of the message copy can be n minus one, uh, considering source has already copy of the message. Is that clear? Right? But then look at this. So uh, there are lower delivery delay, right? So delays are lower. So probability is more that the message will reach towards the destination, right? And it, it offers us the high robustness. The robustness is more. But then you see, lot of resources will get wasted over here. Why? In the single copy, you are not wasting any network resources. He, here, same message copy M with the message IDM is being replicated and being forwarded across the network. So we are wasting the network resources and major network resource which is getting wasted is the buffer, right? The bandwidth. And it may invite the collision in future, right? So no doubt we are able to improve, right? The performance that is uh, delivery probability, but at the cost of wasting lot of network resources. So uh, these are the two schemes which we are trying to discuss. We have discussed first about uh, the direct transmission. Direct transmission is the scheme follows under the category single copy. So it's a the it is the most simplest strategy that we can have in hand. So the source carries the message unless and until it meets the destination. And only it can give a copy of a message towards to the destination. No other relay node uh, can accept the message copy, right? Or allowed to you know forward the message copies. So how many transmissions are there? It is just one and the delay, it's a largest possible, right? And fine, this, this uh, remains always an open. Is it finite? Yes. Uh, with, with the consideration what we uh, talked so far for the simulation, the largest value also, we have to take it into the bound of the finiteness, right? And the delay which we will get from the direct transmission is uh, going to act as an upper bound for all other schemes. What do you mean by it is going to act as an upper bound? What, what do you mean by it is going to act as an upper bound? Suppose there are five nodes, 
two nodes are performing a direct transmission and the delay which is experienced is uh, let's say 500 milliseconds right so this 500 millisecond is the maximum time can have to uh, transmit the message from source to destination so if you go with any other scheme their delay will be always lesser than the 500 and that is why this says it is going to give us the upper bound in case of a delay it is going to give us an upper bound for the delay i hope you following me so uh, now we come uh, and try to look at a more closer way towards uh, the, the the discussion there are disconnections in the network right and if there are disconnection uh, how can we improve those disconnection so to improve the disconnection the only uh, support which we can have is the contacts if the nodes are coming into the contact then there are the opportunities and we have to use that opportunity or those opportunities to relay the message right so what are the contact types right so contact types are scheduled predictable and the opportunistic uh, let me take an example uh, the scheduled contact this session has been scheduled 3 to 5. So it's a scheduled contact. And all of you are being here because uh, it has been well announced that there is a session and you are joining that session. So it's a scheduled contact. And scheduled contact has a definite time. And within that definite time, a set of node can exchange the messages. Next is a predictable contact. A predictable contact says it is not scheduled. But some event has happened in the past and from that we forecast the future for an example that some session had been organized on last wednesday at 3 pm and there was uh, there are let's say uh, 50 students who remain present so we may expect uh, 50 students uh, in the coming session so it's a predictable and to predict those we have to look at the past history unless and until we have the past history uh, we cannot predict the future so we need to keep the history and that history we analyze to compute let's say the probabilities and with those values of the probability we can eventually answer whether the node is promising node which is going to appear in the future and this is one of the uh, you know uh, a technique which we are going to use when there are multiple nodes in the contact we have to select one node so which node shall we select so we want to select the node whose uh, probability values are higher so more probability value better is an opportunity that it is going to forward that towards the destination and the last is an opportunistic opportunistic means uh, say you just go on the way and uh, you you come across your uh, you know your old friend so it's an opportunistic contact you have never expected you are in let's say this premises and all sudden uh, you you come across uh, you know your ug classmates so it's an opportunistic contact right and that's why we have given the title it's an opportunity right and that opportunity allows us uh, that the two nodes are coming into the contact they exchange the information that does not mean that eventually this information is going to be delivered towards the destination but yes the relay can be done hope by hope and it will reduce the time and over the time over the over the successive uh, you know the opportunities which you will get or the node will get uh, will ensure that the message will reach towards the destination this uh, term opportunistic uh, gives us a lot of you know synonyms for the delay tolerant network a delay tolerant network we can say it's an uh, episodic network it's an opportunistic network it's a challenged network uh, you know it is a partition network right why why all this these are all synonyms uh, episodic connectivity so episodic connectivity is this is a schedule and then next time again you will have some fixed uh, time uh, you know to come into the contact opportunistic you never know and all of a sudden the node comes into the contact partitioned network because the connection is not end to end and is not going to remain end to end so uh, connection so two nodes are two nodes have the connection again there is a disconnection again there is a connection so that's how we term this as a partition network our objective is though the connectivity is not continuous is not end to end can we design the routing protocol or can we know what all routing protocols are available in the area uh, uh, no, which ensures that we will get the maximum uh, delivery with 
you know, some acceptable delay. We cannot say it's a minimum delay. Why? Because the network itself says delay is permissible. But we want to keep under certain lips and bounds. That's the first way uh, to understand and ensure that whenever we will have an opportunity uh, in terms of a schedule contact or in terms of, let's say, a predictable contact or uh, an opportunity, uh, we would wish to relay the message from source to destination. Now, uh, let us look at the scenario that mobility of the node patterns and the mobility model. All uh, the way we are sitting right now over here means all the nodes are static and only one node is mobile. If I have a message and if that message is belonging to, uh, let's say, a PML, then what I need to do? Since that node is static, I will have to move. Are these two nodes currently in the coverage? No. Right, because the coverage of the node is limited and that depends on the type of uh, uh, network interface that we use for the wireless connection. It can be a Zigbee, it can be a Bluetooth, it can be uh, you know any wireless standards. What it says, if the nodes are moving within the network, it brings more opportunity, right? And that opportunities can be an opportunistic way that the node may come into the contact with each other and we can utilize those contacts right to relay the message we can utilize those contacts to relay the message so what we want to convey is uh, in the network we can have all the three kinds of entity that either all the nodes are mobile none of the nodes are mobile or some nodes are mobile so if let's say no entities are mobile you are sitting as what you are right and if uh, if we take that all these nodes are a wireless node then you have a fixed connectivity so if any node any message is being instantiated let's say from the first node and if it is to be delivered to the last node then this node is not in the direct connection with the last node what uh, this node can do can start relaying the message to the nearest node a nearest neighbor and hope by hope right eventually that message may reach towards the destination it may be the case by the time it reached to the second last node, uh, completely the power gets off and message does not reach to the destination, but the message will not drop because every node will have the persistent storage. And in that persistent storage, what we do? We store the message unless and until the next contact opportunity arises. And moment the next contact opportunity arises, we relay the message towards the destination, correct? So that's the first part that either no nodes are mobile or the second is some nodes are mobile, right? Uh, uh, let's, let's take an example of some nodes are mobile. Uh, say uh, you want to, uh, uh, you know, we, we have some throw boxes and uh, that, that, that we, uh, we, we define an area of, let's say, one kilometer by one kilometer and we just throw those throw boxes. Now, these throw boxes are very tiny device, uh, very battery sensitive, right? But, uh, and it is, you know, uh, it is connected with the nearest uh, uh, access point than any animal which is, you know, uh, passing uh, towards uh, these throw boxes will immediately able uh, able to you know get the information about uh, that uh, you know the, there is there is some entity which has been passed correct but then the challenge is since it is ba battery operated you cannot ensure that if you have got uh, 20 throw boxes after some t plus delta uh, t amount of time all the throw boxes are alive no it cannot right but still with this set of throw boxes, we are able to bring certain partial connectivities, right? And where do we need certain partial connectivities? Say, for example, disaster management. The entire uh, infrastructure has been collapsed and immediately you want to you know, establish the communication channel. You can utilize this. Consider the military battlefield where the troops want to communicate in some controlled message to the nearest troop, right? So the short message is acceptable, but it should go from source to destination. And the last, all entities are mobile, right? Vehicular network, which we were discussing, all the nodes are mobile. If all the nodes are mobile, uh, you know, it, it brings more connectivity, but when we say it brings more connectivity, it brings more challenges also. Why? Because uh, as the nodes are mobile, the contact durations are very short. And within this short contact duration, how much amount of information can be exchanged across the vehicle. So that's all about the node, uh, the node mobility. What about the patterns? 
What do you mean by mobility pattern? How do we understand mobility pattern? What is the mobility pattern? The way the nodes are moving. So do we do we know any patterns of the mobility? Have you ever come across any mobility pattern? Uh, it's not. Uh, it's a model. I am asking pattern. Uh, any 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 pattern? See you uh, know see the students, school students following the teacher. They will straight away go in uh, you know in a single column. Uh, see a group of students right uh, going to visit a museum. Right, though they do, they are not uh, uh, in the queue or uh, in the column, but they form the group, and there is a group leader. As the group leader moves, all the students uh, follows them. The mobility pattern says it has got an immense impact for creating the context within the network. Mobility pattern itself has got a uh, immense patterns which can help us to identify when and where the contact opportunities are going to come let me quote one example uh, the the university of uh, singapore national university of the singapore has uh, carried out one uh, you know one experiment uh, almost for 200 days where they kept uh, the access point across the campus right and small uh, the small uh, java enabled application were given to the students and they have to load on their mobile now what that application does that moment a student passes right to the nearest access point it just logs the device id and the time and they carried out this for almost 200 days and after 200 days when they actually did the analysis that let us understand the students pattern where the students are so most of the time students are found in the canteen now that is a surprising result they should be in the classroom but the pattern says that they are in the canteen correct so if if we have got such a realistic data if we can do the analysis of data certainly we can offer the network and we can write and routing algorithm right which can support an application which is meant for that particular environment correct you can you can you can have one more application right over here uh, uh, no we can just keep our bluetooth on and let there is a bluetooth logger right and let us identify uh, each of uh, you know the the node by their mobile number and a device id where the pg or ug students are so all the students are not in this uh, seminar hall maybe some students are in some lab some students have already left some students are presenting their work or some students are uh, no going with the poster presentation so how many students are there in the class how many students are uh, uh, you know appearing for the review how many students are uh, you know uh, attending the session are these nodes are dense there are too many nodes or too less nodes can we create some contact opportunity right so this kind of analysis on the realistic data we can make and we can present the results right so that's a part and then once we have the patterns we can propose the model once we have the mobility patterns we can immediately propose the models corresponding to that no doubt is going to take the third and the most important part and that is the network resources so the network resources are uh, such as a mobile nodes uh, uh, or uh, you know uh, the mobile phones pdas laptops bluetooth uh, there are a lot of gadgets these days right uh, sensor nodes throw boxes uh, you know mules uh, we have a zigbee devices right uh, sensor nodes these are all the nodes we can consider so nodes are also heterogeneous and they offer the different uh, capabilities right but one thing is sure uh, they have a very limited storage right and the transmission rates are also uh, you know uh, very limited and most of the nodes are battery operated so moment let's say uh, the battery gets drained off right uh, the opportunity gets vanished right and we have to wait till uh, either that node gets recharged or appropriate opportunities are you know arise for that particular node so now let's do the classification classification of uh, uh, the mobility models i'm sure you must be aware of this classification are you or not so uh, all the mobility model can be broadly classified into two categories one we term that as the real traces and second we term as a synthetic model right what do you mean by the real traces the one example which we have uh, uh, come across 
of you know the national university of singapore where the entire experiment was done for the 200 days we collect the traces right we analyze that trace and we present the result are known as the real traces but for the real trace what are the challenges we have to establish the network we have to write an application we have to ensure uh, that application has been given to the targeted audience we have to ensure that they are using it we have to ensure that the data is getting logged we have to ensure at the end. that's uh, the first assignment uh, i thought that no we should seriously do and uh, understand as you no know, what what we uh, are discussing about so let's take a very quick look on the assignment maybe uh, you know you can you can try at your uh, place so very first question is so what are the differences between the traditional network and uh, uh, delay trolled network how do we define the differences that is right and in case of a traditional network store and forward fine this is the first difference second difference second difference uh, so in the traditional network there exist end to end connection where in the case of a delay tolerant network end to end connectivity does not exist right anyway so these two differences are enough to go ahead and let us look at uh, the second question so the second question says what are the differences between the random walk and random waypoint mobility model which which node moves towards the center random walk they, the node tends to move towards the center where in the case of the uh, uh, random waypoint mobility model uh, they they don't tend to move towards the center they hit to the boundary they pause for a while and then they select the next direction and the speed and in case of a random walk mobility model uh, after hitting to the boundary the node does not pause right it immediately selects the next direction and the speed next uh, examine the behavior of a random direction mobility model uh, and add your views so uh, this is the random direction mobility model and then we you have to now narrate your views in fact there are short videos also available uh, but uh, looking to the time available to us uh, let us just look at uh, the slide and uh, we we have to give our view so view is in case of the random direction mobility model the nodes are more towards the boundary uh, nodes are more towards the boundary moment they hit to the boundary they change the direction by 180 degree and there are no sharp cuts there are no sharp turns rather cuts it is better to term turns right so there are no sharp turns are we okay fine so give an example of column and pursue mobility model uh, what do you mean by a co column mobility model so give give an example of column mobility model a uh, students following the class teacher it's a column mobility they will always move in one you know one column they won't deviate try to understand right why it is not a group based model why it is not a group based model but it is a column model why it is not a group based model but it is a column model you can uh, you can always argue sir uh, when you say the students following the class teacher in the single column why can't we say it's a column uh, why can't we say it's a group based mobility in the group based mobility model within the group the node can have a random walk in the group based mobility model the nodes within the group can have the random walk right but they will try to refer the group leader right when we say it's a column mobility model you are only referencing a single node right and that node actually referencing the leader and all of them are moving in the same direction with the same speed and with the same coordinates so there are no ideally there are no random walks when we talk for the column mobility model what do you mean by a pursue mobility model pursue mobility model says that let's say the police which is trying to catch the escaper it's a pursuing so what the police is police is doing it is trying to catch the escaper right or let's say a thief right so the the police coordinates or the the node coordinate will change as the escaper is changing the uh, coordinates so uh, the police will move faster if the escaper is moving faster so that means it is a pursue mobility model right any other example for the pursuing mobility model uh, you can have that as a short assignment think of the pursue mobility model and uh, maybe you can post uh, your answer uh, list some applications of uh, opportunistic network or a delay tolerant network we have we have started with the application itself so we can use that for a military battlefield we can use it for 
uh, uh, Zebranet, that is for the health monitoring. We can use it for the disaster management. We can use it for the satellite communication, so on and so forth. Right? So there are pool of applications available where delay is acceptable, but we want to see that can we forward or exchange the information across the node where there are no end-to-end -end connectivities. Clear? So now this makes our basic, you know, uh, uh, the, the basics very clear. Up to here, the phase one, you know, uh, gets over. Now we want to talk something about the simulator, right? And this is one simulator uh, we will discuss. And this simulator allows us to simulate the application, right, on the one sim uh, of the DTN, right? So you can write your own routing protocol on this particular simulator. The name of the simulator is uh, one simulator and the full form of the one simulator is opportunistic network environment. Opportunistic network environment. Now what is getting clear to us? Why it is opportunistic? Because we are not sure which contact is going to come and when that contact is going to come and it is actually forming the network for us and we want to see that the protocol which we write, can it work on this environment? Right? So that is why we say it's a opportunistic network environment or it is a one simulator. This is completely open source simulator and it is written in Java. It is written in Java, right? And it is uh, agent based discrete event generator. What do you mean by discrete event? There are two kinds of event we can have continuous event or discrete event. So what do you mean by continuous event? What do you mean by discrete event? One, two, three, four, five is discretic or continuous one two three four five it is discretic one two three four five can be steps right it's a discretic but i'll say one two five it's continuous right so this is a discretic event generator right so it generates the event per clock tick right and it is event based most of the time we really don't understand what is discretic and what is continuous. So if you have a ramp, it is continuous or discretic, it is a continuous. But if we have a staircase, then it is discretic or continuous? It is discretic. Good. Fine. So now we understand what is discretic and what is continuous. So the one simulator is an uh, open source simulator to write and design the routing protocol which can support let's say the DTN environment. It is completely open source agent based uh, 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 simulation and you can just google on that and it offers the complete framework right and that framework consists of it supports majority of the mobility models. So you talk for any synthetic traces or even if you have the real trace you can import into this particular model uh, uh, simulator and uh, uh, it generates the discretic event uh, you can uh, the nodes can exchange the message right uh, there are set of protocols which are already written and we can use it along with the code you can modify and you can play it around right as well as the framework is available library is available with which you can write your own routing protocol supporting to this environment right uh, uh, the new version is also supporting the notion of the energy consumption right uh, there are graphical tools and a lot of uh, reporting data which are being generated and that we can certainly uh, you know visualize and we can do an analysis of that and there are interfaces available to import and export uh, the traces within. Uh, on the left hand side, if we want to see the architecture, what is written, I'll tell you. Uh, it is, uh, these are all the mobility models, try to understand. Uh, these are all the event generators. What is written over here is a simulation engine. So uh, mobility model and let's say the event generator, both of them give an input to the simulation engine. This is the routing logic we have over here, right? And that routing logic uh, uh, has got, let's say, the routing data, some configuration files, right? And let's say the code, the core code, correct? And here, what we have is a connectivity data as how the nodes are getting connected to each other. So uh, the entire routing logic goes to the core engine, that is the simulation engine. Uh, from here, we take, let's say, the mobility model. From here, we take up the event generator. 
broadly event generator is allowing us to pass let's say the external uh, events uh, uh, in fact the message generation and uh, the simulation engine which is a core of that uh, it will decide now whether to relay the message to the next node or it is the last node to whom we should deliver the message right and all that data comes to the visualization and the report this you can analyze and you can prepare the charts so that's an complete architecture and the way uh, we see this diagram it is basically an architecture on the right hand side uh, what we have is a framework right i will just show in a minute like uh, uh, how this framework looks like and uh, uh, you can just download it's a a simple zip file download and if uh, jdk and jre install in your machine you compile all your java file it will generate the class files right and in the batch mode you can run the simulator opens and uh, by default it shows the the world space which is nothing but the map of helensky city where you can put down the nodes and you can uh, carry out your simulations right so let me show you that uh, how this simulator look like uh, looks like and uh, how it works see this is the simulator right so this is the one simulator uh, i have already loaded the file uh, so you know uh, okay so uh, you know i have to give some uh, simulation time to this uh, let's say i'm 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 giving some simulation time to this and uh, see the nodes are, the nodes have started moving right you see the nodes are moving here uh, in fact i have to just uh, zoom in to this graph say the nodes are moving right as the nodes are moving uh, these are the event log which shows across which nodes the connection is up or down and if the connection is up or down are they exchanging the message or not right and uh, since this is the helensky city graph uh, it's a map based mobility model and they actually follow the map but you can change this graph and you can put up let's say a random walk mobility model random waypoint mobility model and even if we have the real traces we can pass on on the right hand side what it shows is all the nodes which are which are there in the so uh, say we have taken uh, from 1 to 22 nodes right and all the nodes are uh, moving on to the helensky city graph moment the node comes into the contact with each other right it shows whether the connection is up or connection is down if connection is up uh, what is uh, the event generator will generate the message can we can we exchange that message right so it exchanges the message and here all other logs are getting maintained and these are the start stop uh, uh, pause and if you want to take a screenshot you can just take it you may think uh, sir how did you start this right so uh, there is no rocket science in this uh, let me show you uh, that this is uh, uh, see this is uh, the c prompt one is the folder i have created correct let me just stop for a while okay can i can i just yeah let it run right so uh, what it shows that simply i have downloaded one uh, one 1.4.1 1 .1 zip file i have extracted and then during the uh, your sessions i compiled uh, all my code right and i generated the class files right and uh, uh, and then you have to only type one dot bat you have to type one dot bat see this is the second line uh, second last line and one parameter which we have passed that is nothing but default settings dot txt i will show that is the most important part whenever we talk see we talk lot for the network but we never configure the network right we never configure the network and yeah uh, as i stated ns2 simulator cannot uh, simulate the dtn network or uh, ns2 simulator is good for tcp ip for udp for simulating the wireless protocols uh, for ad hoc protocols but moment the dtn protocol comes it fails so this simulator is exclusively for simulating the uh, opportunistic network and their related protocols so see one parameter which i have passed and uh, that is default settings.txt if you look at this line i am sure you are following me it's one dot bat and something is written that is the default configuration file right so uh, let me show you that uh, you know how is that file and uh, 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 how it looks like are you i'll do a very quick look on this i won't take much of your time in uh, going with but this file goes as an, an input to the simulation engine right 
So whatever the configuration that you want to pass, you have to pass to this. And uh, since this is the Java code, these are all the properties. These are the all object properties and the values which we are passing is a value of that object. Correct? So we say there is a scenario, we pass the name, right? We say how many connections are there, then we, we take up the transmission range, uh, we take up the transmission speed, uh, we, if we want to define whether the uh, interface is a Bluetooth interface or let's say the, the simple interface, then if it is a simple interface, what is the uh, transmission speed, what is the transmission range, correct? See, lot of things are, you know, very important. Then how many number of hosts? Uh, group we can have, then per group how many nodes we have, what is the type of the node which we are trying to consider. So that's a group ID, look around. So there is a buffer, uh, router, correct, group ID, uh, uh, their point of contact. These all parameters we can pass. See, uh, what is the movement model? So we say it is the shortest base movement model. Uh, the protocol which we are, see, which router right now it is running? Uh, there is some simulation which is going behind. Uh, the router name is Epidemic Router. An Epidemic Router is a multi-copy router which will replicate the message within the network. Which will replicate the message within the network. Correct? So, we have, you know, the Epidemic Router. Then, we are taking the node. We say a node has a, got, uh, node has a storage, right? So, there is a storage. Buffer dot size. You define how much storage you want to give. We can pass the size. Right? Uh, then what is the wait time? How, how long that node should wait? Correct? How many interfaces a node should have? It's a one interface, two interface, or there are multiple interfaces with the same node. Right? What is the speed? As I stated, the node will move with the speed. So what is the minimum speed? What is the maxim maximum speed? And that will define the velocity, uh, the speed at which the node is moving within the world area. Correct? What is the TTL value? So uh, uh, how long that node is going to be available and when it is going to die, right? So TT, oh, sorry, message, I'm sorry, message. So how long that message is going to remain within the network and when it is going to die? So we define, let's say, uh, see, the TTLs are in minutes. Why the TTLs are in the minutes? Because this is a delay tolerant network. If you keep the TTLs in the seconds or the milliseconds, none of the message will ever go towards the destination. So you have to give a sufficiently large value of the TTL such that even if there are no connections sufficiently for the long period of time, the message does not die at the persistent storage. It is remaining available. It is waiting for an opportunity such that when the next node comes into the contact, the message gets forwarded. Clear? Right? So uh, group TTL value, message TTL value, number of hosts, uh, group ID, uh, what is the speed? Uh, so on so forth. Now this is for one group, uh, this is for another group. See, this is a tram group. So we can define the trams, we can take a pedestrians, everything. So these are all the groups. Now message creation. So how many message we want to create? So uh, these are the number of event generators, right? Uh, at what interval you want to create the message? What is the size of the message, right? Everything we can define. What is the message ID? What you want to put as a prefix to your message ID, right? Uh, movement model. Right? So what is the seed value for the moment model? What is the area which you want to define uh, as a world space? So we define our space, right? What is the warm up time? What do you mean by a warm up time? Very important line. Warm up time is a time till which the simulation engine will not take any reading. Warm up time is a time till which the simulation engine will not take any reading. So it just allows us and entire simulation starts, but no readings are being taken up. So let all the nodes should get adjust. So generally we put up a thousand uh, simulation seconds as a warm up time, let everything get set and then we will start taking up the readings, right? If you, if you don't pass this, immediately it will start taking the reading, but then there can be you know, certain visualization uh, in terms of the, the values which are coming. So it is always advisable that we must keep the warm up time and as per the warm up time, uh, you know, we can take uh, the readings and uh, we can take this reading multiple number of times. So uh, generally, you know, when we perform a dissertation or PhD, taking a reading one time is not sufficient. We have to take the same reading number of times to confirm the values are same or if there are any variance in the value, at least we can reach to some uh, optimal value, right? So we can also set that. Uh, uh, since the, uh, if you use the map-based model, then these are all the WKT files which we pass, the reports which we want to generate, the kind of reports which we are generating, message state reports, uh, these are other router settings, right? 
so on so forth this is the gui setting if you want if you think you don't like the gui you want to change the gui you can change the uis also right so uh, more or less uh, almost you know uh, we try to understand about uh, the the simulator uh, see this is the entire class diagram and the package diagram right it shows what all classes are available what methods are available what properties are there where can you plug in your own interface where can you extend the class where you can use the object and uh, write your own methods right so on so forth such that it gives you a complete suit with which we can write the router right installation is you can just google on the one simulator download the zip file right uh, and then simply uh, you ensure that JRE uh, uh, and JDK is installed and the path is set properly. And if it is done, uh, uh, this is for the path setting. I, actually, I ask everyone to come with the laptop. I guess information is not been conveyed to the participant in any way. Otherwise, this could have been a quite uh, interactive session. I wanted you guys to write the router, right, and test it. That was the actual plan. But since uh, uh, the information is, I guess, not conveyed. Uh, anyway, just see around. Uh, once you compile the code, uh, as I stated, to compile the code, you can just go with uh, compile.bat, right? And once you do compile.bat, it will compile all the Java file and you will get the class files, right? And then, fine, just to run, you have to execute on the prompt one dot bat. You have to just uh, write on the prompt, considering it is a Windows machine, you write one dot bat, the GUI will open. But when you are actually ta uh, taking the reading, we don't want GUI. We want the reading should be taken up in the batch mode. In that case, you pass the option hyphen B, right? And then uh, uh, one, it says how many times you want to run this simulation. So you can say one, two, three, or n times, right? And then pass your uh, settings file that is nothing but the default settings.txt. Is that okay? So that's how uh, you can run and then there are multiple settings. Uh, when you actually do it, uh, you will get much much clarity on this rather than you know me telling you do this and that. So these are all the scenarios which I have explained you. Uh, uh, default settings file, right? Uh, how do you generate the message? What are the settings related to models? How it generates the report and so on so forth, right? So actually the second exercise is to have the installation done by you guys, right? Configure it, use it, and then uh, you get to know. Uh, you can use either uh, NetBeans also. You can use Eclipse, right? And if you don't want to use anything, simply install GRE and JDK in your machine, right? And uh, it becomes up and running for you. So as I stated, uh, multi-copy scheme, multi-copy scheme, single copy and multi-copy. In case of a single copy, only one copy of the message will be available in the network, where in the case of a multi-copy, uh, multiple copies of the same messages are available, right? Why multiple copies of the same messages are available? Because we want to improve the delivery ratio, right? Because we want to improve the delivery ratio. And to improve the delivery ratio, we are making a lot of compromise as we waste the network resources. Making multiple copies will waste the network resource. But on other hand, since this is a challenge network, we have to identify the way through which we can improve the delivery ratio, right? So one such protocol or the most basic protocol in the category multi-copy is epidemic routing, right? And the word epidemic has come from the medical science uh, epidemiology. That is how the disease spray through the infection, right? So if let's say you have got an eye infection, you come into the contact with a non-infectious person, you are transmitting your infection and so on and so forth, right? And from that, the, the, the routing protocol we have that is called epidemic routing. So whichever the node comes into the contact, if that node does not have the message copy, we'll make a message copy and give it to him, right? So we want to show that. So that's a node A, right? So node A moves comes into the context with C, C does not have a message copy, make a message copy. Now there are two nodes with the same message copy, both the nodes will move and will give two more copies into the network, right? And uh, node now B goes uh, and gives a message copy to D and maybe uh, D is the destination, but then there are, it generates too many transmissions, right? Single copy will have only one transmission here, there are too many transmission, over in the single copy, we have only single copy of the message here. We have multiple uh, uh, copies of the uh, message, but then uh, it is always uh, we have to look around the routing object. If you want more delivery, you have to make some compromise, 
right? And we have to utilize an op, uh, you know optimization theory to identify as what we can do. So there are shortcomings, right? And those shortcomings says uh, there are too many transmissions, right? Uh, unbounded number of message copies which are available, correct? Uh, under high traffic, high contention for the buffer space and bandwidth results in the poor performance, right? So uh, these are the conditions, uh, these are the case. Uh, let me not discuss about spray and wait. We have only look around for the two basic scheme, one for the single copy, one for the multi-copy. And uh, 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 let me let me straight away, uh, you know, go towards the last part of our discussion and that is questions. So if there are any questions, uh, certainly, you know, I can uh, try to answer. So there is any research paper related to this? There are, there are many researchers, including, uh, you know, one standing here had worked since uh, 2008. Uh, why the nodes move towards the center or the boundary in case of random walk or random direction? Uh, in fact, they are mathematically written like that. That see what I said. Okay, it is a synthetic models, right? So they are being written. Uh, you are picking up an equation, a Euclidean distance equation. And the way you implement the Euclidean distance equation, that is under root x square minus y square, and you see the nodes are moving, you will find that they are moving towards the center, but the code is available. So at any point of time, you, you want that, no, I want to change this code. Maybe you change it, but then it is not random walk. It may be your model. It's your mobility model. Sir, so there is a dot uh, pf address file in NS2. Yes. So, is there any similar file existing? See, uh, let me quickly recap on uh, the one file. One, one is a simulator available. Only one file which we have to pass is default settings.txt, right? You write all your configuration in the text file and you pass that to one through the text file. So, moment one dot bat runs, right? What it does, we are passing a command line argument, default settings.txt. That command line argument initializes all the constructor and it gives the default value. And moment you start the simulation, as per that initial value, the entire simulation engine starts. And at the runtime also, to the level we have done the R&D, at the runtime also, you can change the values, right, and pass it to the simulation engine. Sir, what are the practical applications? Uh, practical application, as I stated, uh, for example, uh, we have taken up a trace, right, uh, for let's say a national university of Singapore where most of the students are found in the canteen, correct? It's a mobility model, right? So that mobility model can be given as an input to one simulator, right? And you write your router. It's an epidemic router which is available. Let's say I, I want to say it's a student router, right? And I want to see what is the delivery probability, delivery ratio and the throughput, right? So we'll give a real trace as an input. We write our own router uh, which will extend the basic router will define our own parameters and we can do it. First thing. Second, uh, there are mobile apps available, right? Where you can install epidemic router, direct transmission and everything, correct? And just keep your Bluetooth on, right? And generate some message and see to which destination you have defined and you can extend the message. And you can note down the time and then you can compare uh, the actual result with the simulation result. Is there anything? Any other question, right? Thank you.